AEDT 1170U Psychological Foundations and Digital Technologies, Module 7, Video 7.2, Models of Experiential Learning. Here are the guiding questions for this video. Identify the various models and theorists who have laid the foundation for research on experiential learning. Explain what your idea of constructivist learning means in your life experience and what you're learning in the courses you're taking in this program. How is that different from situated learning where you might learn in context? And which type of learning do you see more of in the business and work world? Here are some of the models of experiential learning that we'll be looking at today. Dewey, who talked about learning from life experience. Kolb, who was a constructivist. Jarvis, who was a constructivist as well. Budenwalker, who talked about situated learning. Beard and Wilson, who dealt with emotions in experiential learning, and Usher Bryant and Johnson, who also talked about situated learning. Beginning with Dewey, who wrote Experience in Education, he is considered to be the father of modern education, and he said that all genuine education comes from experience, but not all experiences are equally genuine or educative. Some experiences miseducate, and they can distort uh, our growth and place people in a rut, and I'm sure we've all experienced some of those. So the value of an experience is judged by how it moves one forward in our learning. And often, if you think back to the motivation video, it really is up to us to choose how we take an experience. We talked about in the stress video that it is how we respond to what happens to us that really decides our path. So just a few things to consider as we move along here. Learning tends to be based on two principles according to Dewey, continuity and interaction, and our learning is never really isolated because we connect to our past and the future implications. So what implications does that have for the lived school experience of students? Remember, their impressions of school can really color how well they learn from being in school. Moving on to Kolb, more recent researchers, they looked at the works of Dewey, Piaget, Young, and Rogers, who we've all talked about in this course already. They were all psychologists or educators. Kolb generated six general principles of experiential learning. Learning is best conceived as a process, not an outcome. Learning is relearning as you discuss, refine, and redefine, which is what we do in tutorial when we talk to our colleagues. Learning is often dialectically opposed. That means that it requires a resolution between two opposing modes of reflection, action, feeling, and thinking. You can think of this as the biographical gap that happens when you're experiencing something new that you don't know about yet. They also said that learning is holistic and that it involves interactions between the learner and the environment and learning is constructivist in nature. I hope you're starting to see some similarities in some of this thinking. They also said that learning from experience requires certain abilities. First, an openness and willingness to involve self in new experiences, observational and reflective skills, some abstract analytical abilities to create new concepts, and some decision making and problem solving skills. If you think of these four elements, which of these do you think is the most difficult for adults to possess or acquire? Think back to personality. Are some of these traits that are unchanging or are the things that we can learn and improve upon? Let's move on to Jarvis, who was a critic of Kolb uh, because he thought that he did not consider issues of power, experience, and reflection, that they don't exist in a vacuum. So Jarvis argues that the person brings his or her biography to the learning situation. And you've done that by taking this course. You've each shared a different background, a different cultural background, learning background, motivations, and reasons for taking the course. And each of you is unique. So our psychological history affects our learning. We can engage in non-reflective or reflective learning, meaning we either repeat the past or doing what we're told to do, or we take a look at what we're learning and we actively plan, assess, and reflect where we want to go next. The more experiences we have, the less likely we are to learn from them as we choose what is familiar and deny new learning. This can be because adults get comfortable in what they know, and as you get older, you tend to be comfortable where you are, and you challenge yourself a little bit less. Moving on to Boot and Walker, who take a situated approach to learning. This approach states that specific contests shape an individual's learning in different ways. An individual's past history, 
also known as their biography, their learning strategy, and their emotion influence their learning. So I hope you're starting to see how our humanity has the biggest impact on our learning. Combined with the technology, learning becomes a very complex situation for adult learners. People need to work through any negative feelings they have about learning or going to school or technology or whatever is blocking them so that they can create new learning situations. Are there any examples that you would feel safe to share for yourself or for students that you know? Beard and Wilson stated that they recognize the importance of emotion in experiential learning. And for people to learn effectively, they need to have confidence in their abilities, good self-esteem, support from others, and trust in others. So this really connects back to the personality module we talked about and some of the factors in online learning and personality attributes. They would say that distorted learning can occur if a person is told negative messages about themselves or they're forced to learn something, or if you become in a state of learned helplessness because your technology is not working. So the challenge is to keep asking for help, finding resources, and finding ways to work through because fear can really block learning. Again, if you have any comments to share on past experiences, bring those to tutorial this week. I think you'll find that there is a commonality in everyone's experience here. Usher, Bryant, and Johnson, they critiqued Jarvis Budenwalker for focusing too much on the individual. They felt that the self is a culturally and historically variable category. In other words, if you were born in a different time and a different culture, your view of yourself would be quite different, which is what Bandura in social learning would agree with, that reciprocal determinism means we act on the environment and the environment acts on us, so our view of ourselves is culturally and historically variable. Thus, the meaning of experience is never permanently fixed. It's always open to reinterpretation. Hindsight is twenty twenty. That might be very true. Learning is neither transformative, emancipatory, or oppressive, but it has the potential at any one time or context to be any one of those things. And finally, are you the same learner all the time? What factors affect how you perceive a learning experience? An example of this might be who you were as a learner in high school versus who you are as a learner if you're now a parent or if you have other obligations outside. Your priorities in learning have changed significantly. Usher, Brighton, and Johnson also said that our lifestyle practices affect our learning. We all know that if we're more fatigued or we're not taking good care of ourselves, we're less ready to learn. Experience is used as a means of defining the self in the context of socially and culturally defined norms. Think about the impact of technology on this. How do those socially and culturally defined norms change when we need to have a Facebook page and we need to have a Twitter account and all these other ways of defining ourselves? Even vocational or work practices and socioeconomic factors can affect learning. So what are the implications of this on learning for you? Can you give some examples of things that might impact on students? Some of the ones that I would mention would be some of the messages that students receive about gender, about weight, about sexuality in the media, and about accessibility to technology. These are all things and are different lifestyle practices that can affect our learning. Here are the synthesis questions for this module. Choose one of the models that you feel best matches your experience as a learner and begin to note how technology has played a role in your learning. For example, Boot and Walker believe past emotional experience affects future learning. So how has your past experience learning a new technology affected your confidence, self-efficacy, and willingness to learn new modalities? I look forward to hearing your examples in tutorial.